Welcome back to yet another tutorial on Power BI and DAX. It's me, your VA Sensei, James. What we're going to talk about today is the perimeter pattern in DAX. So let me quickly give you an example. So this, by, this pattern is all about uh, where you have report filters, uh, perimeter set up in your report, and where you change the users make selections on the, the perimeters or filters, and that has a direct impact on the content of the report. Let me give you some example. Top end. So you have your, uh, your perimeters um, and your filters, and you can say top 10, and it shows you top 10, top 20. Top, so you can see it changes the report layout, and it's all dynamic. So your users have that in their, in their hands to basically manipulate the content of the report. So let's also take another one, scale of measure. Your users want to see these sales amounts in millions. They click there. They want to see it in thousands. They want to see it in... Uh, normal units. Uh, another example would be you have a requirement where you basically want to check what the impact of discounts would be on your sales. You can say uh, discounts only kick in when we sell three products, but I want the discount to be at 20% above three products. So then you can see the impact on discount and amount. You can see that amount changes. Pretty cool. So we're going to spread this over four videos. And this first video, we're going to start simply by showing you how to change the scale. All right, step one, we need to create a perimeter table. It's basically stick within our filter. So this one, for this example, we're going to basically allow you to switch between units like millions, thousands, hundreds, and just the, the unit itself. What we first need to do is we need to go into the data view. And what we're going to say is we say new table. For this, we're going to create a scale table. So I'm just going to paste it in there. So we're going to use the data table function. We're going to create a two-column table, a scale, with a, which is a string value, and a denominator, which is what we're going to use to divide by. And we're going to insert units. Uh, we're going to insert rows. Units is one. Thousands is a thousand. And millions and million. If you want to put a billion in there, you can put a billion. If you want to put hundreds in there, you can put hundreds in there. Let's actually do that. Let's put hundreds. And we put in there a hundred. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Once we have that, we have a basic little table. You can see it looks like that. And in our data model, we're not going to let this table, we're not going to connect this table to anything. See, it's loose and it's independent of the actual data model or the, the, the star schema. Okay, second thing that we're going to do. We are now going to create the measure. Okay, so first of all, let's quickly drag that in here. Where is my scale? So I'm going to drag my scale in here. It's not what I wanted. Drag it in there. So there we go. So we, if I say hundreds, it should show in hundreds. Millions, it's it should show there. Okay, so it's not doing anything at this stage. So now let's quickly create the measure. Whoop, whoop. There we go. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, so I'm going to call this one sales amount unit perimeter. Okay, so first we start off, we declare a variable for the actual real value, the sales amount. And that's just referring to the existing sales measure. Then what we do is this is where the magic comes in. We create a denominator variable. And we use the selected value function. Selected value function is quite cool because this thing returns the value when there's only one value in the specified column. So whatever we select in our filter, it will use that denominator. If there is more than one denominator, it will default to the value of ones. So it will divide by one. Okay. So now that we have that, we're simply going to take the real value, which is sales amount, divided by the denominator. And if all of them are selected, then we know it's just going to be one. So let's quickly see what happens. It's pretty cool. So I'm just going to make sure this is currency, currency, and I'm going to make the decimal zero. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag it into, let's say this one over here, I'm going to drag it into next to sales. Okay, so you see this column over here, I'm going to now change it to hundreds, oh, changing to hundreds, millions, thousands, and just units. And if I select more than one, it defaults um, to the units. Pretty cool. Eh? Okay, so now next thing that we're going to do is, 
I want to do the same for the total cost, but I'm going to so show you a simpler way of doing it. So if we have multiple measures, we want to do that. But if we just create, we say create a new measure. This is like a more reusable pattern. And all we do is, we, let's call this the scale denominator. I'm going to paste it in here. And what we do here is we just have the selected value statement. And then we say, once again, the selected value. Um, returns the value when there's only one value and so basically what you select in the folders here would uh, will reflect there but if it's more than one then it will just default to the value of one okay cool so now we have a scale denominator and all we do now with the total cost we just say quite simply instead of writing that massive query we just did now for sales amount we just do we're going to do it for total cost and show you what we'll do very simply Come on, paste. What will happen is we'll basically just say divide total cost by the scale denominator. How cool and simple is that? It's a much simpler way of doing this thing. Let's drag it in there. Okay, so now let's try thousands. You can see it changes it. Millions, hundreds, units. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Keep your eyes open for part two, which is a bit more intense.